Hi, my name is John Stan and I'm a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and I've been practicing acupuncture for the last 25 years. Uh, I'm also uh, the president of Eastern Currents Distributing, which sells acupuncture needles and other clinic supplies for practitioners. Um, we decided to design our own brand of needle with some of the features that um, I found that were needed in the clinic. First of all, let me show you the difference between the Teva brand and a standard needle brand. Uh, there's been a trend over the years for needle manufacturers to veer away from the traditional copper handled needle to a stainless steel or aluminum alloy handled needle. And, uh, and while the, from the manufacturer's point of view this was an idea that they, had it made, they thought it made it look cleaner. And also copper is a very active metal, it's, it oxidizes over time. And so if this needle was sitting around for a year and a half or two years, um, and not processed properly, it may start to develop a, a, um, a little bit of tarnish. So, and manufacturers say, oh, that doesn't look very medical, so we'll go uh, to the stainless steel or aluminum alloy handle um, because it never rusts or never tarnishes. But uh, the reason that copper was used traditionally is because it's a very active metal, and there's a good reason why when we decided to design our own brand that we w went back to the copper handled needle and uh, the manufacturer that we use actually processes the copper in a particular way so that it, that it doesn't tarnish over the three year uh, or three and a half year um, date of use for the product. So why, um, why do we use the copper handle needle? Well, because copper is a very active metal, like I said, and stainless steel is uh, another metal with a different metallurgical property. And when you have two metals of different uh, metallurgical property, they will want to start to exchange electrons and energy. When you have two metals of the same energetic property or metallurgical property, there's very little exchange between these two metals. Now, what becomes very interesting is that um, once you put the needle into the patient's skin, uh, the uh, salt in the, pa in the patient's uh, tissues starts to ionize the stainless steel and that creates a pull for the um, copper to start to release electrons. So now what you actually have is like a microcurrent occurring between the two metals and the skin. So we find that the copper handle needles that were used traditionally were actually used because they are energy positive. The stainless steel handled needles, on the other hand, while sure they will conduct electricity, they will conduct uh, energy when you warm them with your hands, uh, you can attach uh, electric, electrical uh, stimulators to it and, and, and it'll conduct it fine. Um, warming it with moxa, same thing, it'll conduct the heat. But on its own, when these two sit there in the tissue by themselves, this one is an energy neutral needle and this one's an energy positive needle. So we took that into a factor when we decided to design the, um, the Teva needle brand. So uh, just bear that in mind. Plus, it's a lot easier to see when you've actually dropped the needle on the floor. They're a little bit easier to see um, is because of the contrast of the metal. Another feature with the um, Teva brand is the tube dimension. Now, when you use a standard uh, tube, uh, a lot of the different brands out there um, feature various widths for um, how they retain the needle in the tube. And so we designed the Teva tube with the narrowest um, tube possible. So when you compare with the various brands out there, and I'm just gonna, I got a few here, and you can see that the actual lumen or the opening of the tube is uh, for the Teva brand it's very very narrow in which this means that you get a very precise insertion point um, versus um, a wider um, tube where when you tap in that needle it may the entry point may be may vary it within that opening so the Teva needles have this very tiny uh, lumen which allows you to get a very precise needle insertion when you tap in the needle. The other factor with uh, the tube is the actual amount that is being um, delivered into the skin when you tap in that needle. 
And a lot of manufacturers go to a three millimeter insertion depth. And, um, and so when you measure that distance, when I take off the retainer, you can see that the distance between the here and the top of the tube is, is roughly three millimeters. The Teva needle, on the other hand, we decided in, uh, to go with a four millimeter insertion, insertion depth. So you can see that there's a, another millimeter of um, handle sticking out. Why this is great is that it allows you to really get the, the, the tip of the needle past the most painful area of the skin. Sometimes three millimeters, you know, generally is good enough, but um, sometimes having just that little extra depth can really reduce the amount of sensation that a patient's feeling. And sometimes people have thicker skin between patient and different um, body types. So having that little bit of extra gives you that uh, extra um, confidence that you're, you're not getting it partially through. So that's another feature that, um, that you want to sort of consider and why we think the Taven needles are really the new industry standard. Um, the other uh, feature is the development of the safety sleeve. Uh, well, this is um, my development um, uh, after many years of, of witnessing different styles of practice and diff some of the different challenges, um, inserting needles into different types of tissue and the, view and the trend to go to thicker needles when you're going into um, tighter um, tissue areas uh, and the discomfort that that causes. Um, we came up with a unique method of insertion that, al that, that allows the practitioner a lot of flexibility. So the safety sleeve is an additional outside tube on the outside of the, of the, the main insertion tube that, stay, that slides freely back and forth. And this allows you to um, uh, deliver that a longer needle um, into tissue. Traditionally, once a needle is inserted and the insertion tube is removed, especially on the long, longer needles or thinner needles, the needle will bend and, and bow, bow like that. With the safety sleeve, you can remove the insertion tube while still retaining the uh, stabilization sleeve. And now this allows you to easily deliver that needle. So there's a number of features, and, and I'm going to kind of just go over how to, how to use the safety sleeve so that you have a clear idea. But, but typically, you have your tapping hand and your non-needle hand. And what you do is you remove the retainer, you place the needle on the area with your non-needle hand, you slide the sleeve down to the surface of the skin, and then you tap in the needle. Now you have to remember that this sleeve is a very tiny uh, straw-like external sleeve, so you need to sort of gently hold the tube. Uh, sometimes I, I've trained practitioners and, they, and they, they hold the tube very tightly, and they're actually squeezing the outside tube to the inside tube, and so when they try to pull the inside tube out, it gets stuck. Um, so just be conscious that just gently hold the outside sleeve and then you can easily remove that insertion tube and then from there you can deliver that needle all the way to the depth that you require. And most of the time you would deliver that needle uh, past the opening of this tube and we designed the uh, length of this tube to be the perfect length to actually stabilize the needle and then once you've got it to the proper depth you can remove it and then finalize your depth that you require. Now sometimes people will deliver the needle to here and then try to remove the tube and it may get caught here. But I'm a, I would just suggest that if you're going to leave that much space outside of the, uh, the, the tissue, then why not use a shorter needle? So in the case of the three inch needle, you definitely want to go past the opening and then take it out and then deliver to the depth that you require. The other feature of the sleeve is that it's very uh, soft and it's, um, and it's malleable. So you can pinch and feel the needle as it goes into tissue. And you can also use it to redirect the needle into various um, insertion areas. So if I'm delivering here and then I want to sort of target some tissue over there and I want to target some tissue over here, it gives me all the varying angles uh, that I can tap into or if I want to like try to like curve the needle and sort of slide it um, just under the skin, I can curve it this way and and deliver it uh, more more horizontally. So so because um, 
the sleeve is um, very malleable. You have a lot of choices and a lot of options. So it's very great, uh, very useful for that feature. Now, on the one-inch needles, um, we decided, you know, the, the needles are stable enough. You don't really need an extra sleeve to use, use uh, to stabilize needle to get it in. But we decided that on every needle that's a 40, 30, 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter and longer, that we would put the sleeve. So when you, um, when you get a 40, 40 millimeter needle, you will have a sleeve here as a potential aid. Now you may not use it, uh, or may not need it because if you're going into soft tissue, uh, you know you're not going to come into a very much resistance. So you could you could just leave the tube on, tap in the needle, and remove both of them at the same time. You don't actually physically need to separate them, but um, but it, it is there if you need it. So but if but if you don't need it, just use consider it as one tube. And remember, as I just demonstrated before, that the amount of plastic that is used in the other tubes, they're wider, uh, they're thicker plastic. Here these tubes are very narrow, the lumen is uh, very small, the sleeve is again very very minimal amount of plastic. So when you actually look at the same length tube with other classical tubes, the tube and the sleeve together are, is, is less plastic than a standard individual tube. So don't think that you're wasting uh, plastic, it's actually less plastic overall. Now, let's say that you were uh, going into dense tissue, say uh, into a knee joint or a very tight um, SI joint. Here, now you just have the sleeve there as an additional aid to slide the needle, uh, slide down and use uh, into that very fibrous tissue and get that in there. Uh, so, so these, these um, um, multiple uses will give you a lot of flexibility and can meet um, a lot of the different needs that you may have in the clinic. For example, some practitioners like to use um, uh, very thin needles and they found that when you go to the longer needles they get the, it's very difficult so you have to go get a cotton swab and then stabilize the needle with a cotton swab. So here with the Teva brand with the safety sleeve you have, um, you have this additional aid, it's always there to, to help you. If you have a longer thin needle, it's there to use all the time. If you have a thicker needle, you may or may not use it depending upon the condition. Now, um, there are some practices of uh, needling that use multiple insertions of needles into a zone. Um, depending upon the province or state that you practice, this may or may be considered um, uh, valid technique, but sometimes there is a, uh, a zone of fibrous tissue that the practitioner may want to break down and they will traditionally tap in the needle, treat that zone and then reinsert the needle and then um, go into the next area and tap and treat. Now you can use the safety sleeve actually as, a, as an injector and this is done, it takes a little bit of practice and you should practice ahead of time, but you can slide the sleeve, tap in the needle, remove the insertion tube, and then treat. Then you can remove the needle just out of the skin, move the tube, and now you can peck the needle in to duplicate tapping. And then you can treat that area that you want and then remove it out and then tap in again and treat. So, so this practice is a little bit uh, dif different. And if you notice, if you imagine that the skin is here, and I've got the needle into the, into the tissue. I pull it out so that it actually is out of the skin. I move the tube over and then I peck first so that it's just about four millimeter depth. And then I treat, pull it back, move the needle, peck, and then treat. So this pecking motion and treating motion, it takes a little bit of practice, but actually it works really well and it saves you having to reinsert the needle over and over again. Now, um, again, we designed this needle with a lot of different types of practitioners in mind, and the needle comes coated and non-coated. So you can tell a coated needle, and I've got a little uh, card here with a membrane that du duplicates the surface tension of skin. Um, and I'm gonna get a non-coated needle. This is a coated needle. And I'm going to get a non-coated needle. 
So the non-coated needle, when it goes into the tissue, it, it drags. And you can hear this little squeaky. This means that this is non-coated, it's super smooth, and, it's, uh, and, it, and it pulls on tissue, creates more of a sensation, and some practitioners want that. The non-coated needles, on the other hand, uh, have a micro layer of, of uh, medical grade silicone. Something to consider is that sometimes you get some very inexpensive coated needles, they say, but you don't know what type of coating they use. Um, we ensure that the, the type of coating that's used on these is a micro layer of medical grade silicone, and when you put that in, there's no, no resistance. And so when you put that needle in and you treat, um, you, you don't get the, the uh, sort of the patient discomfort that a non-coated needle will give you. So a lot of practitioners prefer this, especially for the different types of needle and techniques that they use. Uh, one uh, consideration to remember though is because the needle, the coated needle is not grabbing tissue and creating a big sensation, the patient may not feel, or to you it may feel like uh, butter and, and nothing's happening. But uh, it just means that you need to be a little bit more precise. Uh, check your point again, take out the needle, find the point and then reinsert and then you'll get that sensation because the, um, the non-coated needle can create what I call a little bit of a false chi sensation because it's just creating sensation and people think, oh, I got it. But when you actually know um, with a coated needle, when you actually get that sort of chi, they'll feel it and it can travel uh, and, and pr produce less sensation, but they'll get the chi sensation. So how do you tell when the needles are sitting on your table, uh, they're out of the box, um, because just so you know, on the box we tell you non-coated or coated. Um, so here's an example of a non-coated needle and here's an example of a coated needle. Um, so when they're sitting on your shelf, you can see that um, it's a coated or non-coated. But what if you've taken the needle, needles packages out and they're sitting on your treatment table and you didn't know which box it came from? So we um, um, worked with the manufacturer to put a, on the lot number an NC at the end of the lot number that says non-coated and, um, and then on the needles that are coated at the end of the lot number you'll see a, a C there. So um, that way you have the convenience of knowing. And, most people will have a coated and non-coated needle uh, option. Most people use coated all the time because it just has a better patient retention. It's more comfortable for the patient. But occasionally, every once in a while, you do get somebody who is um, um, allergic to silicone. Uh, that'll show with a little bit of redness, and usually they'll say it's itchy. And that's and sometimes even a hive will. Uh, develop in the very allergic patients. Nothing serious will occur. Um, that'll be it. It'll just be itchy and, and uh, a hive will, will, will come out or some additional redness that's beyond the usual redness that may occur. Um, in that case then you, need, you know to switch to the non-coated needle and so that's why it's always nice to have an additional box of non-coated needles around uh, for that occasional use. Um, now, we, and we also designed the table needles. We took into consideration those that like bulk packing, and we uh, created uh, the Teva Speed Pack. Now, the Teva Speed Pack uh, comes five needles in one tube. And let me find one here. Five needles in one tube uh, with a little cotton blocking so that the needles don't fall out. So this is very handy because you have, once you've taken it out of the package, you have a clean field around those five needles all the time. So you can put the five needles down on the table like that, or you can slightly pull them up and hold them in, your, in, in the palm of your hand like this as you're inserting to, to insert the needles if you're doing uh, freehand needling. But it allows you this sort of clean field to use um, easily. So you have five needles, copper handled, machine sharpened, and, and coated or non-coated as an option to use. Um, so the uh, standard Korean style 10 pack gives you 10 needles and sometimes you may or may not use all of those. But five we consider is a nice, a nice uh, number that most practitioners will easily use when they're, when they're in the clinic. And if you have one or two extra, you can just leave them uh, for the next patient. 
Uh, in addition, uh, we also offer with the speed pack uh, additional tubes because they, these tubes are come containing the needles. You can open up um, an individual tube for your patients. These are no additional charge, and you will um, you can ask for them when you order them. But um, it, it is a convenience to have clean need, clean tubes when you need them in the clinic. Well, I hope that explains everything about this brand. It's a, it becomes a new industry standard because it reduces uh, the risk of practitioners uh, default of not following clean needle technique. And I've witnessed that many times when you're in a hurry, uh, you may or may not sort of feel the time to go get that extra cotton swab to stabilize the needle. Uh, sometimes practitioners will touch the shaft needle rationalizing that their fingers are clean because they swabbed them earlier on. But uh, the, the extra sleeve allows you to always maintain a clean needle technique. It gives you that extra ability to manipulate the needle in ways that, um, that you wouldn't be able to do with a cotton swab. And um, it's uh, become very um, um, appreciated and a lot of practitioners are using it very happily. Uh, thank you for the time and uh, I hope that answers and shows you why this needle is um, a new industry standard. Uh, it's available, of course, here at Eastern Currents, and it's available through other um, fine distributors. Thank you.